lecture for Respiratory 1540. It's always a good feeling, right, to be um, nearing the end of the semester. This um, lecture is pretty straightforward and pretty short. I think there's only 10 slides, if I remember. Yeah, 10 slides. Um, and it's specifically geared toward the credentialing and um, licensing process for respiratory care providers. Um, and specific for here in the state of Utah. So we'll just go ahead and get started with the credentialing information. You receive your credential from the National Board for Respiratory Care. Um, we kind of went over this website a little earlier in the semester. We went on there and played around with it. Um, that is who credentials the respiratory care provider. So you have your credential, which is related to the National Board for Respiratory Care, and then you have your licensure, which is related to the state that you live in. The state provides your license, but the National Board for Respiratory Care provides your credential, um, given that you pass the test. So um, how do you get your credential? Credential, essentially, is that you sit for your, your written and your clinical test. Your written test is called the Therapist Multiple Choice, the TMZ. TMC test. And there are two cut scores for that test. You have a lower cut score, which if you pass at the lower cut score, you are awarded this certified respiratory care provider um, credential. And then there's a higher cut score that if you pass, you are awarded that certified respiratory therapist credential. And then that makes you eligible to sit for the clinical portion of the test. And then once you've passed both the TMC level and the credential, or TMC level and the higher clinical level testing, that's when you receive your registered respiratory therapist credential. So just a re quick recap, lower cut score, you are awarded this certified respiratory therapist level, but you're not allowed to move forward until you have passed the TMC at the upper cut score level. So at that point, you will receive your CRT credential and then be eligible to sit for your clinical simulation. Um, and it just kind of goes over that here at the bottom. There are two exam required, two exams required to achieve the RRT credential. You have your TMC, therapist multiple choice examination, and then your clinical simulation e examination. Um, what is the process of passing the exams to be awarded the RRT credential. So, like I said, you have to be, you have to pass at the uppercut level and then you sit for your clinical examination. And once both of those are passed, then you are awarded the respiratory, registered respiratory therapy credential. So what if you don't pass um, the TMZ at the uppercut level? Basically, you pay to go take it again <laughs> until you can pass it at the higher level. Um, you are required to pay for these exams. They are not cheap, so that's another motivation to do well the first time because it's pretty expensive to take them multiple times. You have the TMC is $190 for the first time and then $150 every time thereafter. Sorry, my dog's got her <laughs> squeaky toy right here next to me. And then the ClinSim is $200 to take. So pretty hefty amounts. Um, to pay to just continuously be taking your test. So another motivation to be prepared and ready when you sit for those exams. Um, what makes me eligible to sit for the therapist multiple choice exam? You have to be 18 years or older and you have to have graduated with a minimum of an associate's degree from a respiratory therapy program that is accredited by the Commission on Accreditation of Respiratory Care, which in short, Phoebe, stop. <laughs> Um, called COARC, right here. Um, so you need to graduate with a minimum of an associate's degree from a, an accredited respiratory therapy program. Um, those are the main requirements uh, listed. You have to be 18, and then that uh, graduation from that accredi accrediting, accredited excuse me, program. So we've talked about your credential. I spoke to it in the beginning, the credential and then a license, and they're separate entities. One you receive from the um, 
National Board for Respiratory Care, that's your credential, and the other you receive from the state that you live in, and that's the license. And here in the state of Utah, all of the licensing information can be found at this doppel.utah.gov website. Um, and it gives you kind of a breakdown. You select the occupation, profession, and then you click respiratory care. Um, in order to practice as a respiratory therapist in the state of Utah, you must obtain a respiratory care practitioner license from the Division of Occupation and Professional Licensing from that Doppel website. What is the process for applying for a state license? So you complete the online application, include a $60 non-refundable application fee, Provide a copy of your MBRC certificate or original score report as a CRT or RRT. And then um, it notes here that you are not eligible for a state license until you have earned your credential as either a CRT or an RRT through the MBRC, National Board for Respiratory Care. You must provide proof of your credential. Um, and then this licensing, licensure and credentialing, once you have earned either your CRT or RRT, from the Amber C and received your license from the state of Utah, now you are legally able to practice um, as a respiratory care practitioner in the state of Utah. So it did mention here, I just want to point out that you can apply for this license, this um, state license, when you have reached the CRT level. But I just want to specifically note that more and more um, facilities and um, I would say it's more common practice now that you aren't hired unless you're a registered respiratory therapist. Don't quote me on that, but more and more that I talk to hospitals, at least in the Valley and um, up here in Ogden, they want you to be a resp registered respiratory therapist. That is the minimum level of care, of um, credentialing that they're looking for in order to hire a respiratory therapist. So it used to be that you just needed the CRT, but more and more as we move forward, um, hospitals and facilities are wanting you to have this registered respiratory therapy credential. And that's basically the gist of this whole lecture. It's shocking kind of how short it is. Um, I want to point out the module gives you um, an example of what the application for DOPL looks like, DOPL, that D -O -P -L dot utah.gov website um let's see here we go respiratory care practitioner let's see if i can make this bigger there we go um yeah it gives an example this is literally what the application looks like so pretty straightforward information it's it's like any other state document um qualifying questionnaire your licensing information um I think you signed to it at the bottom. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. I thought I saw a signature. Anyways, and of course they want your money. So, um, oh yeah, here we go. Signature of the applicant right here. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It's um, It gets easier once you pass your boards. We, that TMC and um, clinical simulation exam, we refer to them as your board exam, um, both together the TMC and the ClinSim together, we refer to them as your board exam. So once you've passed your board exam, like if <laughs> this is the least of your concerns, right? This is a simple application process. Um, so yeah, if you wanna go ahead and take a look, here's an example of what that looks like on the state of Utah's Department of Commerce page. And that's it for this week. So uh, again, I just want to mention if you have any questions or if you want to reach out with any other information, questions about the program now that our class is coming to an end, I will be graduating at the end of the semester. Um, so I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what the program is like now that I will be done. So let me know, send me an email, um, any questions that you might have or any help that you're looking for, I would be happy to help. So I hope that you guys are having a great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.